1918, with one poem, one man with a club foot and a serious self-esteem problem, sent society on a downward spiral that affects each and every one of us today. In 1818, Lord Byron published Child Harold's Pilgrimage, an epic narrative poem that flipped romanticism on its head with the introduction of a new kind of character, the Byronic hero. See, typically, the romantics ascribe to their heroes a larger-than-life personality. A hero was braver, bolder, kinder, and pretty much better than a man could hope to be. Works were a celebration of nature, perfect women, and triumph in love and life. And then comes Byron. In his poem, a sad man wanders the earth complaining about how he's no longer interested in life because it bores him. This, in conjunction with a few other poems, following the same theme of a hero that ignores or hates society, spurs a revolution through time into the works we know and love today. Already typically portrayed as exceptionally intelligent, the Byronic hero picks up a few new traits over the years. Suddenly, we find the Heathcliffs, a darker, more distasteful hero that scares the reader who's simultaneously being told that he's desirable. Women are drawn to this scoundrel that subscribes to the theory that if you love something, you need to break its wings so that it can never leave you. How romantic. Next, we get the Phantom of the Opera types, not only emotionally scarred, but exceptionally talented. Instead of trying to live in a society that would accept him, given enough time, he chooses to sing-trap a woman into his underground music cave so that he can sing roofy her. Isn't that nice? And the trope only seems to get worse. These characters were originally designed to be more realistic, to be better than that impossible ideal. We see ourselves in them, and that's why we love them. But with each generation taking things to the next extreme, the Byronic hero becomes something much less than heroic. Today, we see this character appearing in some of our favorite TV shows and films. Lord Byron's vision can be found in Dexter, Sherlock, Batman, Twilight, and House of Cards, to name very few. A plethora of almost exclusively white men with clear emotional problems that we cheer on and even emulate because we've confused the origin of their positive qualities. See, we've made so many depressed or psychopathic characters that also happen to be gorgeous, talented, successful, and everything we want for ourselves. We've made so many characters of this type that we've begun to believe that the dark past, the suffering, the depression is a necessary precursor to brilliance. We're assuming that there's a cause and effect relationship, and we're forgetting just how difficult it is to live with and fight against mental illness. Because we're in a world that thinks that the worse a life you've had, the more important and interesting you are. And it's in that confusion where the true danger lies. Many of you have heard of the website Tumblr and of the Tumblr sad girl. Amidst communities actively trying to help those with mental illness, this popular internet archetype exists across thousands of accounts. They post black and white photos of beautiful women captioned with phrases like, I will never be good enough. Their blogs attract the attention of others, and soon there are entire communities outwardly glorifying suicide, self-harm, and other destructive behaviors. This culture of idealizing mental illness causes people, typically teens and young adults, not to seek help for their symptoms, to convince themselves that they suffer from these illnesses in the first place, and in the worst cases, to act on their emotions in a destructive and irreversible way. They lure people in through the false connection between beauty and torment. They proliferate the lie that mental illness and its Byronic traits are the cause of creativity, beauty, and irresistibility, even though anyone that's graduated high school can tell you Correlation does not, in fact, equal causation. But it's a convincing lie. And we find ourselves forgetting that the people grappling with mental illness are not amazing because of it. They were amazing to begin with. We forget that it is more than possible to be incredibly talented in a full-color world. And we forget that all the positive aspects of our Byronic heroes can exist in a positive being. But why do we forget that so readily? And why does it happen so often today? You see, the reason we fall into this mode of thinking is because what most of us want is to be both unique and supported. 
In the developed world, those of us with access to popular media typically don't want for food, shelter, safety, or close relationships. We've ascended up Maslow's hierarchy of needs, past having to center our lives around survival, and now focusing on our more complex internal needs. We need to be supported, something that these online communities offer for the entrance fee of a few black and white photos. We need to be unique, something that is easily attained through mental illness. We need to be self-actualized, to develop and achieve our personal goals, something that seems so much simpler if you're convinced that you can be incredibly wonderful and talented and brilliant if you'd only suffer enough. Because we want it all immediately. We want to think that if we put on the trendy new outfit of mental illness, everything will fall into place. We're in a society convinced that you are more interesting and worthwhile if you're hurting. And it is so much easier to hurt than to actu actually work towards being extraordinary. So we build our lives around our tragedies instead of centering them around what we love about ourselves. And that's sad, right? So what are we going to do now? How are we going to combat this culture? We need to start fighting fire with fire. We need to tell a new story, to create better heroes, characters that represent that same intelligence, creativity, and beauty, but paired with positivity, love of people, and a healthy way of dealing with hardship. Take the lovely Miss Kimmy Schmidt, for example. Arguably an internet and media sensation, this character was kidnapped and forced to live in an underground bunker for 15 years. Now to me, that sounds like the perfect setup for a maniacal revenge story. But instead, Kimmy Schmidt travels to New York City to create a better life for herself, constantly refusing to be deterred or defined by what happened to her. We need more Kimmy Schmidts in our lives and on our screens more celebrations of life and the incredible things that exist in this world, more characters worth emulating, because the change that needs to happen doesn't end with your Netflix queue. We have to embrace this in our lives as well, to recognize that we are not the combination of all of our troubles, but the aggregate of the good that we do in this world. You don't have to be a radical optimist. But you must reject the idea that profound sorrow creates a profound individual. We have to be the ones that break the cycle of idealizing mental illness so that the people that are actually hurting can get the help that they desperately need. So let's ignore the easy route. Let's recognize that an individual that is incredibly resilient, positive, and warm is just as unique as someone that is self-destructive. That the people who work towards becoming better people are the only people that ever really become self-actualized. And that we can all support and rally behind some much-needed light in a sometimes dark world. Thank you.